Understanding hedging strategies for interest rate risk in the banking book. So today's presentation is going to be about interest rate risk in the banking book. Um, so brace yourself for a lot of images of hedges because we're talking about hedging today. So basically, very simply, interest rate risk is just the risk that interest rates change and you lose money. So that can be either through your net interest income or you can lose capital. So one approach that you can use to mitigate interest rate risk in a banking book is through hedging strategies. Um, but it's not hedging as in gardening, it's hedging as in swaps and trying to mitigate your risk. So in this video, I'm going to go through three common hedging strategies that banks use. So the first strategy is duration matching. And this is a really simple way that you can mitigate your interest rate risk. Quite simply, as it says in the name, you're just matching the duration of your assets and liabilities. So the way that you do this is basically you look at the earliest date that your asset or liability can potentially change into straight. So for example, if you had something like a current account, then they can change rate overnight because you can typically choose the interest rate on the current accounts. Whereas if it was something like a five year fixed mortgage, then that's going to be fixed for five years. So it's going to sit in the five year bucket of the duration. So basically what you can do to minimize your interest rate risk is you can match assets and liabilities that have similar repricing dates, which is the date that they can change rate. So for example, with the five year mortgage example, if you are offering customers a fixed five year saving product where they're locking their money away for five years, um, that interest rate is locked for five years as well and the mortgage interest rate is locked for five years so you can offset those two products because they're both five-year products. So the second method that you can use to hedge your interest rate risk is by using swaps. So swaps are really popular for banks um, because it allows them to put an offsetting liability to an asset for example if you didn't have any five-year savings to offset those five-year mortgages, then you can go and do a five-year swap so you have an offsetting liability in the same bucket. And all a swap is, is an agreement between two counterparties. So it's essentially an exchange of cash flows. So you might have a fixed cash flow coming in from the mortgage and you want it to be a floating cash flow because then if you're getting a floating income, then you can pay that floating income to your funding, which is generally more shorter term, for example, like your current accounts. So this then allows the bank to hedge their interest rate risk where they don't have that natural offset from a fixed bond. So basically the example here is that if you've got a large amount of floating rate assets that you can use a swap to convert them into fixed payments. Um, and you can do the other way around as well. Um, usually you would want to hedge something like your two year mortgages or your five year mortgages. So you're essentially looking at where you've got open positions across your repricing gap, uh, which shows your time periods and where you've got those potentially open asset positions or potentially open liability positions. So the third and less popular option I would say is to use options. So options, they kind of do what they say in that it gives you the choice. So you can put an option to say, um, I want to do a certain thing in the future. Um, but I want the flexibility to not do it. So by having this option is actually very expensive because the person on the other side knows that they're going to lose money in either outcome. So because it's not about whether you make money if rates go up or down, for example, it's the margin that you pay to be able to have that flexibility of an option. So the two common types are interest rate caps and floors. So basically an interest rate cap will set a maximum interest rate, um, whereas a floor is setting the minimum interest rate. Banks can buy these options to limit the impact of interest rate increases or decreases, um, but again, they're generally expensive, so it comes at a cost. But there are certain situations where you might choose to use an option because you're willing to pay that extra premium. Um, which would generally be where you've got a volatile interest rate environment. So if you're not sure if rates are going to go up or down, 
um, and you think it's going to significantly move in one direction or the other, then an option can be a useful choice. So using these different hedging strategies, banks are able to effectively manage their interest rate risk in the banking book. But it all depends on what kind of bank you are, what your risk appetite is, what your strategy is, um, whether you want to manage your net interest income more or whether you want to protect your capital more. So there's no one size fits all um, and it depends on your specific institution as to which is the best option for you. But overall, managing interest rate risk is a complicated task um, and often you'll need a combination of strategies and you'll start off doing your duration matching or as more commonly known in the UK, um, natural offsetting. So you'll start off doing that natural offsetting and then you would typically hedge a swap after that and then potentially use options depending on your institution, but you would generally use a combination. But overall, by using hedging strategies, that means that you're protecting your bank and you're better able to protect your capital and your net interest income. I hope you found this video useful and let me know in the comments if anybody's got any questions or if they want to add any comments um, and otherwise I'll speak to you guys soon.